Hey there folks, I know exactly what you're thinking right now. The thumbnail had this really cool infinite series with the gamma functions and whatnot, and this is this is a measly integral that even a fifth grader can solve. Clearly this is all clickbait. I'm leaving. Hold up. Hold up, bro. We are going to derive that infinite series. It yields a beautiful result. And it starts out by playing around with this integral. First, we'll solve it analytically. And for that, notice what we have. We have the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of d theta divided by 1 plus alpha times cosine theta. And the obvious route to solving it would be using the Weierstrass substitution. For which we'll let tangent theta by 2 equal t. Okay, cool. And that implies a bunch of stuff for which I'm going to use a right angle triangle to demonstrate. So the acute angle here is theta by 2. We have t being the perpendicular, 1 being the base, the hypotenuse being 1 plus t squared in the square root. So we have the sine function here, sine of theta by 2, that is t divided by root 1 plus t squared. And we have cosine theta by 2 as well, which is 1 over root 1 plus t squared. So we need cosine theta. Now cosine theta by the double angle formula should be cosine square theta by 2 minus sine square theta by 2. So that yields, okay, cool, 1 minus t squared divided by 1 plus t squared. Now what about the differential element? Well, taking this thing here and differentiating, we get secant squared theta by 2 times 1 half d theta equal to dt. So that means we have d theta equal to 2 cosine squared theta by 2 dt. Now what exactly is cosine squared theta by 2? That is right here. That should be 1 by 1 plus t squared. So d theta is dt divided by 1 plus t squared times this factor of 2. And the limits of integration are quite easy to quite easy to figure out as theta approaches 0 we have t approaching tangent 0 which is 0 as theta approaches pi by 2 we have t approaching tangent pi by 4 which is 1. So all of our hard work has yielded this interesting transformation of the target integral we have integral 0 to 1 of 2 dt divided by 1 plus t squared divided by 1 plus 1 minus t squared divided by 1 plus t squared times alpha. And we can expand using 1 plus t squared by which we have two times integral 0 to 1 dt divided by 1 plus t squared plus 1 minus t squared times alpha. Now, of course, we can expand the multiplication by alpha and collect the like terms. So we have dt divided by t squared minus alpha t squared, and that means we can factor out t squared times 1 minus alpha. And, of course, we're left with 1 plus alpha, I believe. Yep, that's all right. So this is quite nice because all we have now is, in, is an inverse tangent integral which is 2 divided by, we need the square root of this thing here, so we have 1 plus alpha, and we also need the square root of this thing here in the denominator, the coefficient of the t squared term. And we have the inverse tangent of t times root 1 minus alpha divided by 1 plus alpha, the limits being 0 and 1. This yields 2 divided by root 1 minus alpha squared times the inverse tangent of root 1 minus alpha divided by 1 plus alpha. And the target integral was in fact the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of d theta divided by 1 plus alpha, terribly sorry about that, 1 plus alpha cosine theta. So we have a generalized result in terms of the alpha parameter. And given that we have 1 minus alpha squared as well as the 1 minus alpha and 1 plus alpha terms, we might as well consider the case of the alpha parameter equal to the cosine of x, with x here belonging to the open interval between 0 and pi by 2. That would be interesting, because now we have the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of d theta divided by 1 plus cosine x times cosine theta equal to 2 divided by root 1 minus cosine squared would be sine square alpha, and in this case we just have sine of alpha because of the square root. 
and we have inverse tangent of 1 minus cosine x divided by, terribly sorry about that, that's supposed to be an x, divided by 1 plus cosine x. And 1 minus cosine x divided by 1 plus cosine x all in the square root yields the half angle. That's the half angle formula for the tangent function. So we have 2 divided by sine x times the inverse tangent of tangent x by 2, which implies that the target integral, treating this as a function of cosine x in this case anyway, is in fact 2 x by 2 divided by sine x, so we have the cancellation of 2's, and we have x divided by sine x. Okay, cool. Now for the infinite series. Let's take note of the integrand. The integrand is 1 over 1 plus cosine x times cosine theta, and we know this thing to be less than 1. Which is quite nice. It's less than 1 on the interval of integration as well as the domain chosen for the x variable. So this thing is less than 1. This is insanely cool. The reason for that is that 1 by 1 plus x can be expanded as the sum over the non-negative integers k of negative 1 to the k times x to the k. And in this case, we just have to replace x by cosine x times cosine theta. So we have i here equal to the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of what exactly do we have now? We have the sum over k from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the k times cosine to the k of x times cosine to the k of theta d theta. And we can of course switch up the order of the integration and summation operators here and write this as the sum over k from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the k times Okay, the cosine to the x of k term is independent of the theta variable, and we're integrating with respect to the theta variable. So we'll take that outside the integration operator. So we have integral 0 to pi by 2 cosine to the k of theta d theta. And what do we plan to do with this integral? Well, obviously, I'm going to pop in the beta function. So the beta function with complex arguments u and v, of course, is the integral from 0 to pi by 2, well, twice this integral anyway, of cosine to the 2u minus 1 of x times the sine of 2, sine to the 2v minus 1, that is, of x. And in this case, we have 2v minus 1 equal to 0. We don't see any sine terms over there, so the exponent is 0. And we have v here fixed at 1 half. Whereas for 2u minus 1 equal to k, this means that we have u here equal to k plus 1 over 2, which is pretty cool because now we can express this result in terms of gamma functions. So we have beta at k plus 1 by 2 and 1 half equal to gamma k plus 1 by 2 times gamma 1 half divided by gamma k plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2. Okay, cool. Now, gamma 1 half is famously equal to root pi, so we got that thing here. We got root pi times gamma k plus 1 by 2 divided by gamma k plus 2 by 2, which is, of course, k by 2 plus 1. See? It wasn't clickbait at all. This is awesome. I, I love doing this. I love playing around with simple integrals and deriving infinite series from them. I made a previous video on that and there are a few more in my notes as well. So this is something I, I really have fun doing and I encourage all of you to explore various calculus results in this way as well. It's a really satisfying experience. Now returning back to the case of the the integral series problem that I'm trying to evaluate, let me just give myself some writing space, and we immediately see that this thing here, the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of cosine, terribly sorry about that, cosine to the k of theta d theta, this should be equal to, well, one half of the beta function. So we have root pi by 2 times gamma k plus 1 over 2 divided by gamma k plus or 1 plus k over 2. Okay, cool. That is...
quite nice indeed. And now returning to the integral summation problem that is, we have i here. Let me just return back to the yellow color to differentiate the things I'm I'm doing on the side. This was all just a side quest in purple. So we have i here equal to the sum over k, terribly sorry about that, sum over k from 0 to infinity. Uh, we have root pi over 2 which is independent of the index variable k, and we also have negative 1 to the k, quite nice. We have cosine to the k of x, and we have the star of our show, gamma 1 plus k by 2 divided by gamma 1 plus k over 2. And we know exactly what the integral on the left-hand side evaluates out to. That is x divided by sine x. So that means the sum over k from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the k times cosine to the k of x times gamma 1 plus k by 2 divided by gamma 1 plus k by 2 equals we got 2x up top divided by root pi sine x which is absolutely insane i love this infinite series and i love the whole solution development i wait don't go anywhere i'm gonna update the result and the thumbnail we have cosine of x and I know a really cool particular value of the cosine function, and that is cosine pi by 5. This thing equals the golden ratio divided by 2, which is ridiculously awesome, especially in the context of our result here. So by this token, what we have now is the sum over k from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the k, times phi to the k divided by 2 to the k. So we'll just write this as negative phi by 2 to the k. Okay, cool. Times gamma 1 plus k by 2 divided by gamma 1 plus k by 2. And this thing equals 2 pi by 5. And what exactly would be the sine of pi by 5? Well, that would be, wait, we have a root pi term as well. That would be root 1 minus cosine square, which is phi squared by 4. So that yields root 4 minus phi squared divided by 2, which is quite nice. We can expand using the factor of 2. So we have 4 pi, 4 times root pi, that is because of the root pi in the denominator giving us what exactly do we have we have a factor of five here and we have four minus phi squared and phi squared is of course five plus one so we have negative phi minus one this is of course equal to three minus phi so we have a beautiful result connecting pi and the golden ratio which i should write in a nicer manner like this four by five separately and all the cool kids hanging out we got pi we got three minus phi which is awesome now i hope you enjoyed the video be sure to like and subscribe drop me a follow on instagram share this result across the internet and the galaxy so they may bask in the glory of this infinite series result and in case you like the effort i'm putting in you can support me via patreon thank you see you next time